the two day speakers um and i'm i'm happy to welcome you uh andreas wolfeld from trump and god's gurish from our uh, sister association vdw um will give you insights in the specification OPC UA for machine tools with a number OPC 4500111. And yeah, they will give you some insights in their work, what they did, but also what is already released and how it may be used in the industry and the role of the whole activity. And with this, I would directly hand over to you, Götz and Andreas, and I'm really happy to have you here and um, I'm listening for the next minutes. Thank you, Andreas. So um, starting with a short introduction of ourselves. Um, my name is Andreas Wohlfeld. Um, I'm working for Trump Machine Tools, and I've been doing so now for close to 15 years. Um, all that time, I've had a strong uh, focus on connectivity, interoperability, standardization, and uh, in special on OPC UA at Trump as well as uh, in uh, a number of associations. And um, with regard to the companion specification that we will be talking about today, um, I've been the uh, the modeling lead for for uh, the machine tool specification at the time that we created it, and um, I'm representing the uh, uh, Trans Machine Tools um, at uh, at the OPC Foundation and uh, also at the VDW uh, in the core group which we'll show you in, in a minute or so, uh, which is still working on continuing development uh, of the machine tool specification. Gertz, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Andreas Fahrt, for inviting us uh, to that opportunity. My name is Gertz Görisch. I'm consultant for digitization and product security as a VDW, the German Machine Tools Builders Association, as Andreas said, a sister association. And in uh, my duty, um, beside uh, being a consultant for our members, um, I'm leading the activities of these working groups, the joint working group for machine tools. I'm actively contributing in many other uh, working groups, and I'm also involved into product securities for machine tools in special. Let me give you a, for, a short introduction to the agenda today, uh, first of all, we would like to introduce you to the domain of machine tools. Then we will uh, show you use cases and reasons for standardization. Um, we will continue how harmonization and active felicitation of such works in that regard, and what are the current topics and future development we are working on for machine tools. The VDW. Um, as said, uh, the German name is Verein Deutscher Werkzeugmaschinenfabriken, founded in a similar matter like the VDW, VDMA. Uh, we are also headquartered in Frankfurt, and together with the uh, Sector Association for Machine Tools and Manufacturing Systems in the VDMA, we represent about 300 um, primarily mid-tier companies. Um, they contribute for about 90% of this sector yearly turnover in Europe, which is um, last number I have here, um, 12.7 billion euros in 2021. Now, how does this all started? Basically, uh, the VDW and its members had a prior experience in OPC UA and the creation of a companion specification, namely, which is today known as OPC UA for CNC system. It was a output or a result of a uh, former research activity, basically as an internal um, interface between an HMI application and an underlying CNC system because many of our members face the um, challenge that they have a HMI application with, which abstracts the underlying CNC system because due to customer demand, they need to build the same machine tool with different CNC systems. But um, after a 
a strategy workshop of a newly elected VDW board. A project was started to redo and rethink everything we need for um, to foster the digitization and um, the industry 4.0 uh, movement. So that led to the um, formation of a working group, um, as Andreas already said. He was uh, the representative from Trump. Many other companies were on this group as well, but uh, you will get an e in detail um, explanation by Andreas. And all this um, work led to what is today known as OPC way for machine tools. Andreas. And so um, as Götz already said, the initial initiative for, for this project or for the work on, on this um, company specification came out of this uh, strategy workshop of the VDW board. Um, and after that, the, the official kickoff, so to say, was at, uh, at EMU 2017. Um, some some meetings had uh, had happened before, but the real work started after that. And um, interestingly, it, in in the beginning, it felt really slow. And I think that's something that um, almost everybody who is in such a group, which starts in you, um, can relate to, because we we had to find the common ground. Um, as you can see. From the companies that were in this group, there are competitors in there. So we had to find the right uh, way of working together. We had to find um, the right language because uh, each company uses different words for the same things. And that took a lot of time in the beginning and we thought we were really slow. But if you look at the rest of the timeline, you can see that for standardization, we were actually quite fast uh, because we, we had milestones uh, which were ambitious at the time, but we did reach them. We, we had the, um, the ambition to have first prototypes at uh, the AMB fair in 2018, which we did. Um, it was not, not very uh, similar to the interface that we had in the end, but we could show what we were working on and the direction that it was going into. Um, then the next big milestone was uh, the, the live demo at the EMU 2019, and Gus will show you a few impressions of that uh, in a minute. Um, so that was basically two years, um, almost to the day uh, since we started uh, this project. And after that, it went pretty fast. We had uh, the release candidate and then the final release. So a little over two years to get uh, to get a companion specification starting from, from scratch. Um, and we had some interesting milestones on the way as well. So um, as you can see, there is um, the launch of the Umati initiative that started with machine tools, but is now, of course, um, comprising a lot of companion specifications besides uh, machine tools. Um, and of course, we, we started as a, as a project with a quite small group of companies, but uh, of course we started a joint working group to, to get into the process of making all this into a companion specification on the way. And uh, all this was a significant amount of work and to, to get all this done in two, a little over two years, was quite an achievement, I think. And we are going to show you some details about the steps and also some of, of the guidelines that we gave ourselves that, that led to what we have today in the companion specification. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Um, the official uh, formation of this joint working group happened uh, beginning of 2019. Um, after we, as uh, Andrea said, presented um, a draft in um, 20, end of 2018. Um, we started with a rather large group. Um, you see on this picture, we had about 50, 60 people um, joining the kickoff meeting. And then 
we continued with many face-to-face -face and web meetings with an average of 50 plus persons. Um, in total, we had 85 member companies uh, working on that with 190 registered persons. And on the right-hand side, you see a split um, about who, who or from what um, association or from what um, background they came. For sure, a large percentage was um, the machine builders, but we also had on board all the major CNC control manufacturers from the beginning, um, which was complemented by component manufacturers, software suppliers, and uh, also some research institute. Just another picture from a working group session we had in uh, Stuttgart. You can see a full room of people working on our topic to work forward. But we didn't stop there with the joint working group. Um, as you can imagine, we also have other sister associations in the world because the machine tool community is quite strong. So the VDW and the working group, we try to synchronize our activities with the respective associations worldwide, um, like um, Asia and the US. We are also partnering um, with um, some consortia, which we're doing similar things um, from Japan, China, Switzerland, and the US. Um, you might recognize the logos on the bottom. And um, in the end, um, we also started um, to contribute our work to machinery and the OPC um, harmonization working group, which was created only after we we and others started working intensively um, on the different levels of harmonization. And um, as of today, I would say we are quite successful in synchronizing our activities here. And uh, all this started, as um, Andreas mentioned, with our yeah, quite successful live show at the EMO 2019. And I have... Um, just a few impressions. Um, so we had a large booth where we held um, expert meetings to introduce everyone who was there um, to that topic, to that companion specification and everything which came afterwards. Um, I can tell you I was there. Basically, if we would have sold, if we would we if we would have something to sell, we could sell it in, in hundreds each day. Um, on the top right hand corner, you see the international press conference we had and uh, the UMATI booth with the machine tool specification was also part of the opening um, round tour and the Federal Minister of Transport and uh, Digital Infrastructure joined our booth and uh, worked there. And now some impressive numbers. Um, as of today, I think we still hold the record in building an OPC UA live demonstration. We had 110 machines connected to a large aggregation server. Um, about 100 were directly from the fairground. We had 70 companies contributing that um, machines. And uh, what really was astonishing and uh, showed how OPC UA companion specification worked, we had 28 software solutions who were connected to this aggregation server. And there was no need for anybody to talk to each other because everything was written in the specification and it was clear how this interface works and what to expect and how to work with it. And um, yeah, in total, it's all these companies were from um, 10 uh, different countries. So it was already back then a global reach on that um, showcase. We are continuing with this effort. We are const constantly evolving uh, what we started there. Um, if you like, um, and if you have been there on Tuesday, you heard from Mark that the Umati app is the way to go in proving how that works. But now back to the topic of um, the machine tools companion specification, as you heard from Andreas, um, in the beginning, it felt slow. Yes, um, it felt slow because, as he said, we needed to 
um, find the, the common language, li like what we did then written down in a companion specification. But we also needed to uh, um, yeah, cluster and find the right use cases we want to address. And these 10 use cases were the initial um, step we made. Actually, it was nine in the beginning. We then um, extended it with all the other use cases which were available by the machinery. And uh, for sure, we have a backlog um, of this um, use cases we are continuing to work um, on. We will come to that um, in the end of the presentation. But how do we came to that use case? So basically, uh, we sat together, everyone wrote down what he wanted to achieve or what his customers wanted to achieve with this um, interface. Um, then we clustered, we make it uh, more precise. We used an, an agile approach, as many of you probably know. Um, and after we defined the use cases, yeah, we needed to find the signals or the variables and properties a machine needed to have to solve these use cases. These were defined. And um, in the last step um, from the use cases and the signals, we needed to go into how to model and to describe that in a companion specification and how to use OPC UA technology and uh, this is what um, Andreas is now going forward, will introduce you to how our modeling and our principles were laid out and how we achieved that. Back to you, Andreas. Thank you, Götz. Uh, well, as Götz showed you, um, it started with the, with the uh, use cases, then with the signals we needed for the use cases, and then we went into modeling and that was one of the first lessons learned and which is now, I would say it's some sort of blueprint which we use for, for many of the working groups. Start with the domain knowledge, agree on, based on domain knowledge, what you need to do, the use cases, the signals, and then go into modeling. Um, that limits the, the the kind of knowledge that you have to have in the working group and um, you can then you can then hand in in extreme case you can hand it over to to experts who do the modeling but the important thing for each working group is to to agree on what what you want to do within the domain that you are talking about so lesson one um what we did in our group, um, it was, so to say, something similar. After finishing or almost finishing the, the domain-specific work, we agreed on having a rather small uh, group which would concentrate on uh, on the modeling. And within this group, we, we gave us some guiding principles, so to say, um, on, on how to go forward and bring the, the signals into a OPC UA model. And one was that we agreed on using um, the hierarchy, the, um, the inheritance that is built into uh, the technology OPC UA, consequently to, to build upon things that are already there, use them and extend them. And um, that is what, what is shown here, the principle that, that's uh, built into OPC UA. You start with the base specification, you take the types that are defined in the base specification and then um, extend them either uh, if, uh, in, in case of the machinery that you build more specific but still base types or you use the types directly uh, and go into, into your domain-specific specification. Either way will work, but using uh, inheritance consequently, and that's also the basis for more specific um, specifications. Uh, as shown here, uh, there are some examples of uh, specifications that are currently being worked on, like laser systems, which has been finished, cutting tools is something that's being worked on, and uh, GMS as well. So that's the basis using the, the basis and the mechanisms that are built into OPC UA. Um, but in, in addition to using this, um, this built-in mechanism, 
or while using it, we recognize that it also um, could, so to say, could be used backwards if you if you like. Um, in working, we identified some topics that we were convinced were of broader interest than just for the domain of machine tools. And so we we started talking to other groups and and getting to know whether they were working on this as well. Um, but the first thing was motivated by our own work. Um, we wanted to use uh, audit lists in our companion specification. We were surprised to uh, to recognize that OPC UA at that time didn't have a type or types for audit lists. And so we started talking to the OPC Foundation and in the end uh, ended up to suggest uh, types for audit lists. Um, and they were implemented in an amendment to the base specification, Amendment 13, and so are now usable for everybody. Um, so that's why I said inheritance used backwards, so to say, because we had the need for these types, but we didn't uh, stay with uh, defining them in, in, in our specification, but brought them to the OPC Foundation and they recognized the need, the broader need for these types and uh, put them into the base specification. So that, that was topic one to say. The next thing was, um, we were talking about stack lights. A lot of you probably know those. Um, they're used in machine tools, of course, but they're also used in a number of other industries. And so we were convinced that they are not limited to machine tools, to the machine tools domain, and started talking to other groups whether they were interested in, in such types to represent stack lights, were maybe already using them. And we found some groups and closed ranks with them and defined common types to describe stack lights, which were a lot more uh, extensive than we were um, describing for, for our domain. And then we started talking to, uh, to the associations, where's the right place to, to, uh, to have those types? And we started to, to talk to the VDMA um, because almost all of the gro groups that we were talking to were part of VDMA. But we also, while being in those talks, recognized that the reach is even broader than uh, what, what VDMA represents, and therefore went again to the OPC Foundation. And they said, okay, it's not something for the base specification, but it's something that's broader than, than uh, VDMA. Okay, so let's create a new part, part 200, uh, and call it industrial automation. So um, everybody who's in that broader domain of industrial automation will be able to use this. And the next thing was um, the topic of identification, as we called it. Um, so this contains the self-description of the product. And again, we said this, it can't be that it's just uh, machine tool specific. Almost every product is, is supposedly uh, in need of something like this. And again, we started to talk to, to VDMA. And in the end, this was, so to say, the, the start of, um, of the machinery specification, because this was the first topic that was, that was defined there. And it was the, the kernel of closing ranks between quite a big number of, not in the beginning, but today, um, of groups who are working together to define fields of common interest and define the types for those fields of interest so that every group, even those not represented in this, in this definition group, will later be able to use those types to build on and um, so strengthen interoperability because that's the main point. Um, if you use those common types, it will be easier for software systems, for example, working with different products, um, all using these, these types to interact with them. So um, what we ended up with while starting with the intent of just um, 
just defining a uh, companion specification for our domain machine tools. In the end, we ended up with three levels of harmonization. The, the first <clears throat> is for one industry, one domain. In our case, this was, uh, this was machine tools. And this is done on the level of associations, special associations, like in this case, the VDW. The, the next level is cross-industry, but still the association level, in this case, VDMA. Um, and the example is uh, OPCA for machinery. And the, the next step is harmonization on, on a general level, cross-sector. Um, and that, of course, uh, is happening within the OPC Foundation. And so these different levels also find their, their realization in working groups at the domain level, that's the individual uh, working group, and over a longer time frame, uh, those are the harmonization working groups, for example, for machinery at uh, the VDMA or the harmonization working group at the OPC Foundation, which is now in operation for quite a number of years and continuing work to take on topics, define them, and bring them, bring them into the specifications for everybody to use. So um, that's what we are still, as Gertz said, it's something that we are still doing. We started it during the creation of our uh, specification and we are continuing to do it. As you can see here, the first topic, as I said, was uh, my machine identification. That's done. It's, uh, it's, it's been the first part of uh, machinery. Uh, another thing that we brought up, as well as a number of other groups, um, was machine state. Um, we were talking about states for machines, automation equipment, and so on, as a basis to, to calculate overall uh, equipment efficiency, basically. Next topic is job management, and uh, Götz will go into detail on, on this topic in a minute. Another thing, or two other things that we are currently working on within uh, the machinery, machinery group are machine structure and power consumption monitoring. Also two topics that are quite widely used or will be quite widely used because they are needed for or by a, a quite big number of groups. Good, so over to you again. Yeah, thank you, Andreas. Um, I will deep into uh, deep dive a little bit more into the machine tool specification. What you see here is a representation of the profiles and facets we have defined in our companion specification. We said the base for every implementation is a so-called basic facet, which contains um, identification, monitoring, and production. Um, and this is something um, which can be implemented basically on every machine tool, which is technology agnostic, which can be used on simple machines, like a simple um, three-axis um, CNC milling machine, um, up to a highly complex, but also back um, onto existing machines, maybe on brownfield machines, which basically only have a numerical um, um, guidance system, but no real controller. And even so, on, on these machines, with the addition um, of maybe one or two sensors and some signals you need to generate, you can implement that specification. And we showed that in a hackathon uh, last year we held in one of our member companies. Built on that basic profile, you can um, basically pick depending on your um, need for that product, because um, as um, we introduced, uh, competitors are here um, at the table. Um, we cannot discuss certain products. So we needed to create building blocks where everyone can or could build their product for connectivity out of it. And we started in defining um, these, these facets to build up upon that, um, like monitoring, like tools, production, errors, and prognosis. These are the first uh, levels you can build. You see from the um, keys there, um, certain require state machines, others require um, events, and um, a topic um, is then 
um, especially for KPI monitoring and production plan, um, we made uh, the use of uh, dynamic lists. So we were adding um, in that profiles dynamically while runtime of a server nodes to the address space. The KPI monitoring was already an extension um, of our machine tool specification. We see machine states um, Andreas was um, talking about. So here we introduce the machine states to enable real KPI calculations and uh, having the possibility if um, you have the planning view on your production, you could really calculate OE. So what did this mean or what does that mean for um, the address space? Um, in the basic profile, we defined um, based on our machine tool type definition that you need to have um, these nodes. So these are five top level nodes, which um, define the machine structure be beneath that, which we are currently working on in harmonizing as well, because uh, we saw that many other um, groups used um, a similar uh, structure or inherited directly from us. So we, we see here the need to um, harmonize that, but uh, this simple model, this simple representation could be implemented everywhere and it is quite fast to implement that. If you see it in comparison to the full model, um, you see that for sure you need to add certain more features, certain more nodes, um, certain things and um, the boxes around them basically um, shows you how the facets are relating to the types um, and the instances we see here. As you can see, um, we had production right from the beginning as part of a job management. And uh, this job um, model was introduced in version one. It was based on nodes and node, node hierarchies um, in the address space. You can see a sample. Uh, representation uh, to the right. So under the production node, we had the production plan, which then consists of one or many jobs, which in um, this case then contains of identifiers, uh, parts, part sets, production programs, and, and states, and so on. And this implementation could be done either with uh, static job nodes or with dynamic job nodes. But we also had a quite simple solution for machines which don't have a job management. Basically, we were just representing the active program, uh, which could be basically implemented on every manual and um, CNC control machine. This model uh, was created already with the intent for harmonization. Um, and we knew that uh, changes might happen here, but we happily contributed that. Um, to the now harmonized uh, machinery job model, which we now are introducing in the um, currently in review um, available release candidate um, in our machine tool specification. And uh, we uh, in that turn also said that the existing job model is deprecated and it will be removed or yeah, will be removed in a version 2.0, which is um, on the horizon um, to make a clean model again, um, but facilitating here how that work. So that is an example how active harmonization and use of the joint development work um, is done or can be done in the context of companion specifications. Other new features we introduced with machine tool version 102 um, are the um, uh, job management uh, features, which I already explained, but we also make now use of the operation counters and um, probably in the future also of other things which were inspired by our work. Um, basically, our power on duration is now a harmonized um, type in the DI specification and then used in the machinery operation counters again. 
We also introduced a file system, which we didn't have before, um, as a means to transfer NC programs, tool data, digital setup informations, and others to and from the machine. And um, as I said, we deprecated um, production type, production job type, and related type definitions for details. Please have a look in the um, release candidate, which is out for publication, uh, for review. And uh, we are currently working on um, then the facets, uh, which we might have for an upcoming version. 2.0, you see in the middle, we replaced, we will replace production and production plan with a job management um, facet, but this is, yeah, work in progress. To wrap this up, um, this is a short timeline which Andreas uh, compiled for another reason um, about the history of OPC, OPC UA, the different levels, um, how it worked within Trump and how in that timeline all the other topics um, fell. And uh, what you what your t key takeaway should be from this picture that yes, in the beginning it is slow, then adoption picks up and in the end we have a breakthrough. These dots after 2022 are all representing the different specifications, companion specifications, but also addition to the space specification, which yeah, basically are available or are in development and it is really picking up and uh, harmonizing and using things together are um, the key to go. To wrap things up, I would like to give you an, an outlook of what we are working on. As said, we are working on power consumption monitoring machine structure. So this is something which will probably land somewhere in 2024, 25. Um, as said, we will remove deprecated types. We are working on machine tending, on tool loading, unloading, tool data management, production management overall. There were a few um, active factory automation um, companies who in their turn started working on companion specifications for their software, and we are trying to harmonize all that. And uh, we see uh, look on the watch, um, just an overview of published companion specifications and upcoming companion specifications. And I highlighted in the upcoming ones topics where the machine tool group is involved. Um, and with that, I would like to close my presentation and thank you, Andreas, for joining me here in presenting you that topic. And uh, thank you all for your um, attention.